evening and welcome to the Smyrna Town Council meeting. Tonight, before we move into our meeting agenda, we do have um, citizens' comments. And, hey Dan, if you'll come forward and if you'll state your name and address for the record, please. Yes, Mayor Reed, and thank you. Daniel Epright, 114 Seward Street, Smyrna, Tennessee. Uh, I'm here to speak about the Freedom Playground. They never had anything like that when I was little. My dad was Air Force, I was Air Force, I probably lived in 20 towns over time. And I don't think I've ever seen anything quite so excellent. And the primary excellence in my mind is that there's all those kids, some who use wheelchairs, some who don't, all playing together. And that's fabulous. The secondary thing is no one person made it happen. Many people made it happen. It all came together, it was fabulous. And if the town of Smyrna can do that, what else can it do? So I got you a little, uh, I got the town a little present, you know, and it's of nominal value so we don't have to get Mr. Peach involved. Um, and I think um, as a former school teacher, you would recognize that most of the things that you learned in life that were useful to you, you learned in kindergarten. Or from Captain Kangaroo, as he read it out loud on, on television way back when. Does anybody else remember Captain Kangaroo? <laughs> One of the books he read was Stone Soup, about how folks came together and made a fabulous feast. And I think that uh, Mayor Reed and all the folks in leadership and Mr. Brian Hercules, the town manager, and other uh, leadership of the, uh, of the uh, full-timers. Um, you cracked that nut a long time ago, I think. And then you execute it over and over and over again, and I think it's great. And really, I'm wondering what all we're going to do next. And then um, there's a book, it's about 2,000 years old. And the only reason it's 2,000 years old is because it's absolutely true. And in Matthew 25, 20 and 21, it says, the one who had received five talents came forward bringing the additional five. He said, Master, you gave me five talents. See, I have made five more. His master said to him, well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. So do I give these to you? Absolutely. Ma'am, can you make sure that Mr. Hercules gets one? I will for sure. Thank you so much. Dan, thanks for coming and addressing the council. And um, the one thing I will say about the town of Smyrna is um, it is always a group effort. Um, when individuals or groups see something that needs to be done, they're willing to step up and see that it happens, whether that's driven through our town government or through individuals in the community. And that's exactly what happened with the Freedom Playground. Um, an individual and then a group saw a need and um, gathered together to raise the money and make it happen. And um, I think that afternoon when we saw children out on that playground, children of all abilities out on that playground playing, um, uh, you knew it was the right thing. So um, I think we are blessed to live in a community like the town of Smyrna. and. I would almost guarantee you're going to see more things like free Freedom Playground happening um, within the town. So we appreciate you recognizing the effort that was put in, not only by the town, but by individuals as well. So thank you. Okay, um, I will call our meeting to order. Tonight our prayer is going to be done by Chaplain Tim York with the Smyrna Police Department, and our pledge is going to be done by Mike Strange, who is our Utilities Director. If you will all stand with us, and uh, please. Let's pray. Father, we rejoice tonight in the report that we just heard of how our community pulls together. Reminded you have taught us to love God and love one another. And one of the things you instituted was government, and we're grateful for government. We pray for wisdom upon those who lead us. We pray that you would give divine wisdom as they make decisions that just doesn't affect today, but many years down the road. Thank you for an atmosphere of a community that can grow, can love, can care for one another. 
I pray for those who serve this community, those who are our first responders and those who make effort to put their life in line for others. We pray for our servicemen. We pray for our country, our state. And we ask you to bless this meeting tonight with your power and presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks, Chaplain. Thanks, Mike. Miss Diane, if you will do roll call, please. Councilman Cole. Yes, ma'am. Councilman Morrell. Present. Councilwoman Peebles. Here. Councilman Short. Here. Councilman Sullivan. Present. Vice Mayor Atkins. Here. Mayor Reed. Here. We will move on to item three, which is approval or corrections of the minutes of the May 11th, 2021 and May 27th, 2021 meetings. Jeff, are these in order? Thanks, Jeff. Um, any additions or corrections to the minutes? Seeing none, do I have a motion to approve? I move we approve the minutes. A motion, second. do we have a second? A second. Thanks. Um, any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Minutes pass. Moving on to item four, correspondence and communications. Todd, anything tonight? No, ma'am. Okay, we will move on to awards and recognitions. Um, we're going to hold off on breaking bread for a second since she's not here yet. Or did I? I, I didn't see her come in. She come in. Is she in the lobby? Okay. Uh, and we will move on to our men's health, Miss Diane. Whereas, despite advances in medical technology and research, men continue to live an average of five years less than women with Native American and African American men having the lowest life expectancy. And whereas COVID-19 continues to impact lives across the country, with the Centers for Disease Control reporting that males are more likely to die from this pandemic. And whereas educating the public and health care providers about the importance of a healthy lifestyle and early detection of health problems will result in reducing rates of more from disease and whereas men who are educated about the value that preventative health can play in prolonging their lifespan and their role as productive family members will be more likely to participate in health screening and whereas men's health network worked with Congress to develop a national men's health awareness period as a special campaign to help educate men boys and their families about the importance of positive attitudes and preventative health practices. And whereas the citizens of Smyrna are encouraged to increase awareness of the importance of a healthy lifestyle, regular exercise, and medical checkups. Now therefore, by the authority vested in me as mayor of the town of Smyrna, I do hereby proclaim June to be Men's Health Month and encourage the citizens of this community to pursue preventative health practices and early detection efforts throughout the year. Proclaim this eighth day of June, 2021. Thank you, Miss Diane. Um, Lou, if y'all will come forward, and I'm sorry, I did not get a chance to meet your guests yet, so I'm gonna let you all introduce yourselves. How about that? Sounds great. Perfect. Thank you, so I'm Lou Caputo. I serve as the CEO of TriStar Stonecrest Medical Center. And Mayor, I'm Mike Leventhal, and I'm with the Tennessee Men's Health Network. Great. Well, we are glad to have you both here and glad to uh, recognize this month because the men in our lives are very important to us. And um, I know sometimes men can be a little hard-headed. Um, I know you all might not think so, but uh, for some of the females in the room, I think they know so. So, um, so we do encourage men to take their health seriously and to get those preventative checks. So um, where is Ch Chief Bill's not here, is he? He's probably off getting a health screening as we speak. I would bet. I would bet. So, Kathy, are you doing the honors tonight? Okay.
fight over it. How about that? Uh, so we already worked a deal out. Okay. So. <laughs> wanted to say? Sure. Sure. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, members of Council. Uh, June is Men's Health Month, so this is a time of the year where we want to put the spotlight on men's health, not, not just men, but boys as well. So I just encourage all the citizens in Smyrna to uh, take this opportunity to go schedule an appointment with your health care provider, starting with Stonecrest Medical Center, one of the best in the region. Absolutely. We would definitely agree with that. They are a great partner with the town of Smyrna, and um, we do encourage the males in the um, in the town of Smyrna to get out there and take care of themselves. So thanks for coming Thank tonight, gentlemen. Uh -huh. Oh, perfect. Miss Diane, we are going to do our um, breaking bread uh, proclamation now, please. Okay. Whereas breaking bread celebrated its 20th year in business, at 119 Front Street in Smyrna, Tennessee on May 17, 2021. And whereas owner Andrea Cork grew the business from preparing meals in her home to feed her family and neighbors into an independent establishment that offers a unique dining experience, seeking to bless and strengthen those who walk through the doors. And whereas cooking turned into her ministry and she strives to do everything in the spirit of excellence as a reflection of her service to the Lord. And whereas Ms. Cork established Volunteer Meals Ministry that serves meals to all five senior living complexes throughout Smyrna on the first Saturday of each month. And whereas in May 2021, Breaking Bread won a Firefly Award for Best Restaurant in May 2021. And now, therefore, by the authority vested in me as mayor of the town of Smyrna, I do hereby ask all Smyrna residents to join me in congratulating Andrea Cork for her accomplishments and dedication to the community by serving others, proclaimed this eighth day of June, 2021. So we just want to say congratulations. Um, we know that running a small business is tough and it's been really tough over the past year. But to know that you've been successful for 20 years is something that a lot of businesses and small businesses especially don't get to see. So um, congratulations from the town of Smyrna and we appreciate your partnership and all that you do for the town. So, uh-huh. If you all get an opportunity, I would highly recommend that you go check out Breaking Bread on Front Street. You will not be disappointed. Okay, we are going to move to the consent agenda. And if you all all want to take a nap while I'm reading the consent agenda, I think you will have plenty of time to do that because I have almost three pages worth to read tonight. So um, bear with me. The consent agenda are items that are determined by the town manager to be routine matters and not necessarily needing discussion. But if there is an item that a council member would like to take off and discuss individually, we can do that. I do like to read the consent agenda so those that are in the audience as well as those that are home at home know exactly what we are voting on. So I will get started. Item A, approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute a renewal contract with Galls Incorporated relative to uniforms for the police department. Item B, approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute a renewal contract with Solitude Lake Management relative to the annual maintenance for the pond at J.J. McWilliams Old Rock School Park. Item C, approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute a performance agreement with Jason Lee McKinney Band relative to the 2021 Barbecue Fest. 
Item D, approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute a performance agreement with Missy Garnett Music relative to the music and sound for the 2021 Independence Day celebration. Item E, approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute a contract with North Alabama Fire Equipment Company Incorporated relative to the fire department turnout gear, coats, pants, suspenders, bunker boots, and fire hoods. Item F, approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute a contract with CMS relative to the fire department uniforms. Item G, approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute a contract with Garland DBS relative to the roof repairs for fire station five and six. Item H, approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute the completed TDEC grant a general permit for open fracture repair class five underground injection well permit to TDEC division of water supply groundwater management section. Item I, approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute an extension contract with Rollins excavation company ending June 30th, 2022 relative to concrete work. Item J, approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to approve Neil Schaefer as the highest ranked firm to provide construction engineering and inspection services for the ITS phase three, four, and five project. Item K, approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute an agreement with United Communications to include additional fiber drops to interconnect traffic sig signals into the integrated traffic management system. Item L, approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute an agreement with United Communications to install additional fiber for the ITS phase one and two project. Item M, approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute a contract with Stubblefield Construction LLC relative to the replacement of the Valley Green subdivision sign on Wildwood Drive. Item N, approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to ex execute change order number two with Jones Brothers Contractors LLC relative to the Sam Ridley Parkway Riding Project. Item O, approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute a maintenance agreement with TDOT for the frontage road described as Seven Oaks Boulevard from Rocky Fork Road, Enon Springs Road West following along I-24 westbound to its terminus. Item P, approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute a renewal contract with Rockwell Automation relative to the technical support for the water treatment plant. Whew. Item Q, approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute a contract with JMB Tanker relative to the water treatment plant lagoon sludge removal. Item R, approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute the following contracts relative to the water treatment plant chemicals. Carb use, calcium oxide lime, univar, hydrofluorosilic acid, calgon, uh, carbon corp, powder, activated carbon, nexair, carbon dioxide, uh, dico, dico citric acid, S, approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute the following chemical contract renewals for the water and wastewater treatment plants for 2021-2022. The uh, water treatment plant, Univar sodium chloride, Dico sodium hy hypochlorite, Hawkins ADC sodium hydroxide, hydrogen peroxide and calcium thiosulfate, SNF polydine, clairfolic, uh, Gulbertson aluminum chloride, Chloro, chlorohydrate, the wastewater treatment plant, SNF, polydine, emulsion polymer, NICAM, liquid aluminum sulfate. Whew, item T, approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute a renewal contract with IM&E relative to the mechanical work for the water and wastewater treatment plants. Item U, approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute a contract with Thompson Cat relative to the maintenance for the water treatment plant backup generators. Item V, approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute an engineering proposal with Thomas and Hutton relative to the upgrades to the sewer lift station 1R. Item W, approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute a contract with Brenda Walsh as acquisition agent for utilities easements relating to the North Lowry Street waterline project. Item X, approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute a contract with Boozer and Company for, rel for review appraisal services for utilities easements for the North Lowry Street Waterline Project. Item Y, approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute an agreement with Linco Technology relative to upgrades on the Tokay software. 
Item X, approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute the following contracts for materials for the utility department. Water and Sewer, United Systems, GNC Supply, Core and Main, Southern Pipe, Fortaline, and Ferguson Waterworks. For the Gas Department, GNC Supply, United Systems, Richards Manufacturing, Hubel Gas, Carotest, and EYSCO, Honeywell, Elster American, and Mer Mercury. Um, AA, approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute an extension agreement with Dan Weaver Services for the Water Leak Survey, survey Services. Item BB, approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute a mutual aid agreement with Tennessee Water Wastewater Agency Response Network. Item CC, approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute a support agreement with Experitech relative to the SCADA software. Item DD, approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute a contract with Badger Meter relative to the water meters and parts. Item EE, approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute a professional services agreement with Randy Button and Associates for appraisal services for the utilities easements along North Lowry Street. Item FF, approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute the renewal contract with TDOT relative to the right of ways maintenance for 2021-2022. And item GG, approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute an agreement with Regional Transit Authority, RTA, relative to the transportation to the greater Nashville area. Council, any item you'd like to pull off and discuss individually? Could you read those again, please? I wouldn't listen. <laughs> I'll talk to you after council meeting. Um, seeing none, do I have a motion? Move to approve. A motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Consent agenda passes. Ms. Diane, did you bring your pajamas? It'll We'll be here all night signing those. Good. Okay, old business. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight public hearings tonight. Our first public hearing is a consideration of an ordinance relative to the rezoning of property located on tax map 33, parcel 41.00 to go from R4 with ESO to PRD with ESO requested by Janet Abraham containing approximately 1.98 acres. The property is located at 2090 Rocky Fork Road and this is a second reading. Kevin? Yes, Mayor and Council, you all have, have looked at this a couple of different times. This is a rezoning request um, from R4 to a, a PRD. Both scenarios uh, a part of the, also a part of the Enid Springs overlay. Um, this is uh, for about uh, 1.98 acres. Uh, the requested PRD is for 10 single family attached units constructed in five buildings. Um, access would be from Rocky Fork via a private drive. Units will be brick or stone and concrete siding with at least 20% of the exterior as brick or stone. Uh, we did include the pattern book. We have looked at this uh, several times um, and, and essentially all the pattern book has been updated to address all the comments that came out of the planning commission recommendation. Um, uh, the only other issue that has still is, is out there is the uh, regarding the uh, potential stream that's in the northeastern corner. Uh, T-Deck has, has been out to the site and has looked at the site but they have not provided any information to the town or the developer the developers engineer uh, with regard specifically to their determination on that stream yet so um, at this time we don't have anything in writing saying that it is or it isn't and so um, and that is everything else has been addressed with the plans and and, and with the conditions of the Planning Commission recommended um, other than that one item still hanging out there. Um, they have, again, they, they have tried, but they haven't received anything yet. So, Kevin, I know last time some on the council were uh, felt pretty strongly that they wanted that back prior to mm -hmm. um, uh, moving forward. Am I accurate in that, would you all say? So at this point, because we thought it would be back, what are the options at this point so that they don't have to start the process all over? Well, we, I'll, I'll defer to Mr. Peach, but I believe since we've advertised a public hearing, we probably do need to go ahead and hold the public okay. hearing. And then 
at the time, if you all still feel the same way, I would recommend that you probably defer it at that point. And can we defer it as much as we need to until yes, we yes. get that back? Not like a plat, so you can. Okay. Read. Okay. Okay. Questions or comments um, on this item before we move to the public hearing? Nope. Okay. Then at this time, we will go to the public to see if there's anyone here to speak for or against this item. Seeing no one, we'll close the public hearing and go to the council. Um, I guess I'll lead the conversation since I probably spoke on it the last the most. Without the, the, the word back from TDEC, um, I, I don't see uh, I, I don't see how we could vote on it. if. Uh, the way that it's written and the way that it's planned, um, the decision on whether or not that's a stream or a wet weather ditch or whatever has a huge factor on the, the layout of that design. So um, my recommendation would be that we defer it. Um, I don't know how that, can we, do we have to defer for a certain number of days? Can we defer until they hear back from TDEC and let them resubmit or put it back, let Kevin put it back on the agenda once he has that information? You can yeah. You can defer indefinitely, or you can defer 30 days, or with your motion that uh, defer until uh, town planner receives the information you request. Okay. That's what I was inclined to, is to motion to defer until the town planner re receives information from TDEC. Okay, so we have a motion to defer until um, the planning department receives TDEC's recommendation. Do I have a second? A second. Ma motion and a second. Will we have to go back through the public hearing process again? Well, we will. Okay. We do. Yeah. Speak about that at that time. Okay. I would set it for public. Okay. So we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Item B is consideration of resolution relative to a plan of services for property located on tax map. 55 parcel 29.02 yes this is a plan of services uh, for the item the next item on your agenda the annexation request yeah. this is a um, for the, the property at 55 tax map 55 parcel 29.02 uh, the town would be providing all services to this property upon the effective date of annexation other than water which would be provided by a consolidated utility district uh, the Planning Commission did recommend approval of this plan of service, and I would also recommend approval. Council, question on the plan of services? Seeing none, we will go to the public to see if there's anyone here to speak for or against this item. Seeing no one, I'll close the public hearing and go to the council for a motion. Make a motion to approve. A motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Item C is our consideration of an ordinance relative to the annexation and PUD zoning of property located on tax map 55, parcel 29.02, requested by Larry Davis, containing approximately 37 acres. The property is located at 3545 Amable Road, and this is a second reading. Kevin? Yes, Mayor and Council, this is an annexation and PUD zoning request for 37 acres uh, on Amable Road, at 3545 Amable Road. Um, the uh, as, as I said earlier, the town would be providing all services here. Uh, sewer would be be an existing pump station until such time the gravity sewer is extended along Stewart's Creek and Rocky Fork Creek, which does border, border this property. Uh, property is currently developed as a winery and is owned uh, AR, which is agricultural residential in Rutherford County. Uh, this proposed PUD would allow for the, the winery. Uh, five commercial buildings, uh, an event venue with a, a large event lawn area, horse stables and riding trails, and 66 townhouses. Uh, access would be from Alvaro Road at two different locations. The townhomes would be a, a minimum of 1,800 square feet in size with one and two car garages. Uh, the commercial uses in the five commercial buildings would be as allowed in C4 uh, with the additional uses of wine sales and, and, and having uh, wine tastings. I did include the pattern book. Uh, Planning Commission did recommend approval unanimously uh, with several conditions. Um, again, the uses within the commercial buildings are limited to the, those allowed in C4, except for the, the wine sales and tasting. 
Uh, events are required to end at 10 p.m. Uh, with the exception that events occurring indoors can extend to 11 on Friday and Saturday nights. Uh, townhomes are required to be a for sale product and owner occupied. We'd ask them to show the 100-year floodplain elevation. Um, all townhomes are required to have a double width driveway in addition to the garage and that a traffic study for the entire development is required to be submitted uh, with the first site plan. Um, I actually did uh, today receive revised pattern books that addressed the first five comments. Um, they don't have, we don't have the traffic study yet, but that would still would come with the first site plan. Uh, again, the staff uh, or planning commission did recommend approval, and staff would also recommend approval. Questions for Kevin? Seeing no questions for Kevin, then we will go to the public to see if there's anyone here to speak for or against this item. Seeing no one, we will close the public hearing and go to the council for a motion. Move we approve. Have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Item D is a consideration of a resolution and memorandum of ordinance 21-17 relative to the annexation and PUD zoning of property located on tax map 55, parcel 29.02. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. 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 Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. We'll now move on to our next public hearing, which is a consideration of a resolution relative to a plan of services for property located on tax map 54, parcel 17.00. <coughs> yes, this is a plan of services for uh, this, this parcel of land. Uh, again, it is um, the, the same situation as before. This is uh, the town will be providing all services. Uh, upon annexation except for water which again is would be provided by a consolidated utility district the planning commission did review this and did recommend approval and i would also recommend <coughs> approval um council questions for kevin on the plan of services seeing no questions i will go to the public to see if there's anyone here to speak for or against this item seeing no one i will go to the council for a motion I move we approve. Motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? He is abstaining, please. This one and the next one as well. Move on to item F, which is consideration of an ordinance relative to the annexation and R3 zoning of property located on tax map 54, <coughs> parcel 17.00, requested by Sean Collins on behalf of James E. Parker, containing approximately 10.24 acres. The property is located at 8965 Rocky Fork Amboville Road, and this is a second reading. Kevin? Yes, Mayor and Council. Uh, this annexation request is on, at, on Rocky Fork Amboville Road, about 1,000 feet south of the intersection with Kedron Church Road. Um, the surrounding zoning is a mix is RM in Rutherford County and then uh, the Westover and Helmsley Place PRDs in town. Again, the town will be providing all services except for water, which would be provided by CUD. Uh, there is an existing single family house on this parcel and it would be zoned R3 uh, upon annexation. The Planning Commission did review this, did recommend approval, and staff would also recommend approval. No changes since last time? No changes since last reading. Okay. Council questions for Kevin? Seeing none, then we will go to the public to see if there's anyone here to speak for or against this item. Seeing no one, we'll close the public hearing and go to the council for a motion. Move for A motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes and Mark abstained. We'll move on to item G, which is consideration of a resolution and memorandum of ordinance 21-19 relative to the annexation R3 zoning of property located on tax map 54, parcel 17.00. Do I have a motion? Move to approve. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Abstain. Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes with one abstention. 
Item H is also a public hearing. It's a consideration of an ordinance to amend the Town of Smyrna Municipal Code Title 14 Zoning and Land Use Control Chapter 6 Stormwater Management Ordinance. And this is a second reading. Tom. Uh, thank you, Mayor Council. Uh, about eight months ago, um, TDEC came down to do our five-year audit and found some things that uh, need some adjustment in our uh, some of the supporting documents to the uh, stormwater ordinance and their public information and education environmental response plan and our grading permit um, procedures we've made those revisions and provide them to you all okay questions for tom on this nothing's changed no no ma'am it's first reading okay um we will go to the public to see if there's anyone here to speak for or against this item seeing no one we'll close the public hearing and go to council for a motion Move to approve. a motion do we have a second second motion a second any discussion all in favor say aye, aye. any opposed motion passes We'll now move on to item I, which is our public hearing, which is consideration of an ordinance adopting the property tax rate for fiscal year 2021-2022, and this is a second reading. Hey, Rex. Hello, Mayor and Council. Uh, our recommendation is for the tax rate to remain the same from the prior year at 70.07 cents on each $100 of assessed taxable property. And you did say stay the same as last year, right? Yes, ma'am. That's what I thought I heard you say. Okay. Council, any questions for Rex? Okay. I will go to the public to see if there's anyone here to speak for or against this item. Seeing no one, I'll close the public hearing and go to council for a motion. Will be approved. Have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? motion passes our last public hearing tonight is consideration of an ordinance adopting the budget for the fiscal year 2021 2022 and this is a second reading rex yes ma'am uh the staff has put a considerable amount of work in putting together this budget we bought a, a draft budget to you for the budget retreat we spent a good day and a half discussing uh, the budget some future projects down the road uh, we had the first reading on it where we uh, at the workshop we uh, did a presentation and kind of went over uh, the, bu the whole budget and we feel like uh, it's a good budget and we recommend that you approve it we discussed the changes that were made from first reading to second reading and you have those in front of you any questions for those on to Rex we move to the public hearing okay then we will go to the public to see if anyone's here to speak for or against this fiscal year's budget seeing no one I'll close the public hearing and go to council for a motion move to approve the budget have a motion do we have a second second motion and a second any discussion all in favor say aye aye uh -huh. any opposed motion passes under new business, under the Planning Commission report, we have a consideration of an ordinance relative to the amendment of the, approved, of the approved PRD for property located on tax map 32, parcel 9.04, requested by Adam Green. The property requested to be rezoned contains approximately 5.77 <coughs> acres and is located on Blair Road, and this is the first reading. Kevin? Yes, Mayor and Council, this is a, a request to amend the existing PRD, uh, originally approved as Portico Place on Blair Road. Uh, it is directly across from where Portico Place intersects, Blair Road. Uh, it's about 700 feet north of the intersection with Sam Ridley Parkway West. A uh, land use plan for the area, area would support a mix of office, retail, and multifamily development. The surrounding zoning is C2R6 and R1 in Smyrna and PDR and I2 in Laverne. Um, the existing approved PRD would allow 16 detached single family lots. Uh, and the proposed amendment would allow for a development with 33 townhouses. Uh, access would be from Blair Road via an extension of Portico Place, which would connect to the adjoining residential development in Laverne. Uh, the minimum square footage of the townhomes in this development would be 1,551 square feet. Portico Place would be a public street, but the two internal cul-de-sacs would be private. 
uh, an improved industrial development in Laverne uh, will be responsible for making improvements to Blair Road and the Blair Road Sam Ridley Parkway West intersection in front of this property. Uh, I did include the pattern book that was attached uh, and submitted would be a part of this uh, rezoning. And the Planning Commission did recommend approval of this request, uh, 740 against, with two conditions. One, that a public sidewalk is required along Blair Road and to provide ornamental black metal fencing no more than three feet tall in the front yard of each unit. Um, I did receive a revised pattern book today addressing those two conditions and we'll be certainly getting that to you for your second reading if you if you pass it here tonight on first reading. Um, staff did, or I'm sorry, Planning Commission did recommend approval and staff would also recommend approval. Um, questions for Kevin on this? Kevin, I know the Planning Commission recommended ornamental fencing, and I just wanted to clarify and make sure that is not black chain link fencing. Right. I didn't think it would be. I see head shaking no, but I want to make that clarification just in case. Yep. So. Mark or Tim, anything you want to add to this? I know y'all kind of had a lengthy discussion well, we about did. it. Uh, I'll let Tim chime in too, but uh, part of the reason we saw this as a fit is just simply because of what surrounds it. You know, there's apartments across from it. There's uh, industry north of that. and. Um, with the single family housing that Laverne will wind up with in behind there, it sort of gives a layer of buffer coming from the commercial side into the residential side. Uh, one of the reasons I think that we wanted to make sure the sidewalk was placed in and some nice fencing was there is uh, landscaping and stuff to give it a good look, to uh, make it look a little more attractive as you come into that, coming out of the end of the parkway there. Tim, you may have something you want to add. Well, just to kind of echo that this is a transitional area. If you look at the land use plan, uh, this is textbook in which we move from commercial to uh, higher density to a slightly lower, lower density and still lower density. Uh, we're just off of Sam Ridley Parkway here uh, and we just saw this as a uh, good fit for this property. So Laverne Portico is single family homes. That's, That's correct. correct. What is um, due north and then due south that's in Laverne there? Uh, due north is the industrial development that I mentioned. And what uh, is that going to be? It's a big box, you know, oh, what? like sorry. a big box concrete Where? box uh, warehousing type. Till wall, that sort yes, of thing? that type, okay. yes. Um, and we've worked with them quite a bit because a lot of most of their road improvements because they are going to be coming back towards Sam Ridley Parkway with that development and so they are going to be making a, some pretty substantial improvements to Blair Road as well as the intersection there with Sam Ridley. Uh, due south of that I, as far as I know is still undeveloped and I'm not aware of any development plans specific to that site. Um, not that I'm aware of anyway. The R1 there is that's the Darren property, correct? That's correct, yes. Okay, and then on the C2 that is in Smyrna, is there anything there yet? Uh, we have had a site plan approved for a hotel at the corner of Portico and Colonnade. Um, and but that's that's all that's going on in there right the now. The bottom corner is the electrical station, correct? Correct. Other questions? Just uh, another note, if you will, the elevations will face Blair Road and therefore the entry of these units come in from the back. Um, really there's no yard in the back per se, it's you know parking and garage, but that's one reason we kind of looked at the sidewalks and the fencing in the front. Kind of felt like anybody that did live there that had any children might find the, uh, the area in the front a little attractive to play in and I uh, want to make sure we protected that from the roadway. And the backyard looks like it's um, reasonably sized as green space, correct? Correct. correct. You got some detention and stuff in there too. Concerns about parking at all? You know that's, and I'll answer that because uh, that's what we talked about. Uh, you know, you've got uh, parking for three per unit. Uh, 
actually four per unit. Exteriors three. Exteriors yeah, there's, three. So there's a garage and right three. And three exterior. the HOA part of the HOA uh, requirements will be that the in, the uh, garages themselves cannot be used as storage. As a matter of fact, you have to park, uh, or if you're going to park, it's going to be a vehicle. It can't be used as a as storage type area. I would think if they do, it's going to be hard to get traffic up and down through there. Any concerns about uh, safety in regards to fire department? No. There was a little bit of concern from the fire department on the end units, um, but I think they've addressed that because they, the, the initial alleyway going to serve those end units was a little narrower, and they've widened that to where it's, it's as wide as a a street now at 22 feet wide so um, they've, they've I believe they've addressed that as well <clears throat> okay. where it's listed here storm water in the backyard is that retention or detention or what, what is that there, there is detention in that area but there is also some area outside that detention area that's going to be more to be usable open space for the residents and there's a couple areas kind of on either side where there'll be a, some stormwater detention areas but then there'll be areas outside of that as well and there is there's the stream that's shown there does not show up as a uh, uh, any floodplain or anything but it is an area that is a uh, contributing stream as we talked about on a previous <laughs> request and so um, they are showing the stream buffer and all as they're required to do. <clears throat> Other questions? Probably too late. Was, was there ever discussion for that being commercial? Not no. the. We've we've never had any requests for anything. Uh, it was zoned R1 along with this was a part of the Naren property originally. It was all R1. Um, certainly a. a probably could fit as commercial as well uh, from a overall standpoint but I think it's it's a little bit more difficult probably to develop as commercial just because you're getting a little bit further away from San Bradley Parkway and doesn't have as much visibility but certainly but there's never been any discussion about it no sir other questions Seeing none, do I have a motion? I'll move we approve. A motion, do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Move on to item two under the Planning Commission report, which is consideration of an ordinance relative to the rezonings of property located on tax map 33, parcel 75.01 and 75.02, to go from R3 to PRD. This is requested by Jared Gray. The property is requested to be rezoned containing approximately 10.1 acres and are located at 2381 and 2483 Rocky Fork Road, and this is a first reading. Kevin? This is a request for a PRD uh, for uh, to allow 100 townhouses. Uh, access would be from Rocky Fork Road with via an extension of Country Village Drive through the development. Minimum square footage of the homes would be 1,380 square feet. Um, all the roads within the development uh, would be public. Uh, I did attach the pattern book uh, as we do on all these. Uh, the Planning Commission did review this, did recommend denial uh, and unanimously. Uh, staff would also recommend de denial. Mark or Tim, anything you want to add? Uh, once again, you know, we try to be consistent with uh, what's going in what type of areas. We had one the month prior that was trying to work its way into Terrytown. It was an older established neighborhood, and we just felt like this was much like that one. Uh, the density was pretty thick, but just uh, the townhomes themselves weren't a good fit for the R3 that surrounded it, and there was really no consistency there. So. We just felt like on this particular project, it just wasn't a good fit for the area it was trying to be placed in. 
Well, and I've had some people ask me, are y'all just opposed to all townhomes? And I don't think that's the case at all. I think you can see that by some of the stuff that we have approved. It's just that we want to make sure it's the right fit, no matter what it is that's going in, what, what, whether it's homes or anything, we just want to make sure it fits with the surrounding zoning. So. And too, Mayor, we're getting, uh, you know, we're getting more developments as we grow that are a, a mixed uh, type of product where you have 55 and older, townhome, single family residential, and that's that's kind of what you want to see in a larger development. But uh, to us, this just didn't, the surrounding, everything about it just didn't fit. So we felt like uh, what you just said, that we are not against them, we're not necessarily for them. They are affordable housing for a lot of people these days, which is something we're running out of quite quickly. But uh, for this particular one, we just felt like we needed to uh, not approve it. But not only affordable housing, not everybody wants to keep up the yard. yard. They yeah. don't, you know, it's not the, I want the acre lot with the picket fence and, and all of those things. So They have their place. That's exactly and, right. And, and uh, this just wasn't that place. So. <laughs> Other questions or comments? Do I have a motion? I'll move we deny. I'll so second. Motion and a second to deny. Any discussion? All in favor of denial say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is denied. Item three is consideration of an ordinance relative to the rezoning of property located on tax map 50, parcel 7.07 .07, to go from C2 to PUD. It's requested by Rob Mulchin. The property requested to be rezoned contains approximately 4.48 acres and is located on Seven Oaks Boulevard and this is a first reading. Kevin? Yeah, this uh, property is on Seven Oaks Boulevard. It's about 1,300 feet west of the intersection with Almoville Road. Uh, land use plan would support an office retail multifamily mix in this area. Uh, surrounding zoning is C2 as well as PRD, which is the villages of Seven Oaks uh, across the street. Um, this proposed PUD is for development with 26,000 square feet of office warehouse space in two, two buildings and then an 89,752 square feet self-storage space in one building. Uh, access would be from Seven Oaks Boulevard in one location, as well as a connection to the adjoining office warehouse development that will be at the rear of the site. Uh, the proposed use uh, in the two office warehouse buildings would be as allowed in C2, which is uh, what is currently zoned. Uh, I did again attach the pattern book and master plan. Uh, the Planning Commission did review this, did recommend approval, and I would also recommend approval. Questions for Kevin on this? Mark or Tim, anything? This is another one we looked at because uh, that, that area over there is starting to show some signs of life. For a long time it was quiet. There's a lot of residential over there. there. This is enclosed. The back side of this is enclosed storage. It's not exposed storage. So the design review uh, met probably above our standards for what they're going to do there. Plus that larger building backs up to the interstate. And so there's not much of attractiveness for, for business there otherwise. But the two commercial buildings in the front are exactly what we were looking for in a way to kind of give a buffer to that back building. But all three buildings look really nice. I think you can see it in your drawings there. They did a good job on design reviews. So we thought it was a good fit. Questions for our council, for our planning commission members or for Kevin? Three, two. Two? Okay. Yes. There is an area that's kind of at the top of the building that looks like a, yeah, a that's floor, possible, and yeah. that's that's not a, okay. that's really just a decorative almost just on top of the building. It's just to make it for a little bit of architectural interest, I guess you might say. It's not an actual usable space at all. Other questions or comments? Seeing none, do I have a motion? I'll move to approve. Motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. 
Item four is consideration of an ordinance relative to the text of the design review manual to amend section 3.4 architectural character. Uh, this is a first reading. Kevin? Yes, this is an amendment to the design review manual. Uh, this is something that uh, there's been a lot of discussion at Planning Commission regarding certain materials, and so we wanted to bring this forward to them, and they did uh, review this. Um, this would just uh, amend uh, Section 3.4, Architectural Character, uh, as to address allowed exterior building materials. Uh, the proposed amendment would remove tile and plaster as allowed materials, uh, move stucco and EFIS architectural precasts only being allowed as secondary materials, uh, and requiring that at least 75% of any building facade that is visible from a public street uh, is required to be finished with primary exterior materials and at least 50% of the entire building facade is required to be finished with the primary exterior materials. Uh, I did change the format a little bit just to make it a little more clear and understandable. Um, the Planning Commission, again, they did review this, did recommend approval, and I would also recommend approval. Questions for Kevin on this? Do we have this a lot on houses as well, or is it mostly just um, on no, it's, it's just commercial and, and multifamily. Okay. Yeah. Other questions? Well, I was, I was asking Tim before the meeting about why tile would be taken off. I mean, tile's not a surface which um, uh, that requires a lot of maintenance that doesn't look like it has um, durability um, so on and so forth and I, and I recognize the fact you don't see it very often but it could still uh, like be used as accent uh, you go to well I mean I think there's a few few uh, buildings on Church Street in Nashville that may have some tile accents in it and you go to Europe and you see a lot of tile there I mean was there any what was the thought process I guess is that well question. and I as I had it originally drafted um, we did kind of leave them alone and then they, it was in the discussion at the meeting is when the planning commission some of the planning commission members brought up I think it was really more specific to plaster than it was tile but we ended up taking the discussion was to take them both out just because they're never really used but um, so hey, she, that that was kind of the discussion I don't think anybody had a problem with tile necessarily but we were looking for an example of where we had it and it's it couldn't be brought up so we were thinking if it's not used uh, why is it in there kind of question but the plaster side of it is really kind of I think what we were after I'm more so plaster, I mean, so uh, I, I can tell you I don't think the Planning Commission had a, a worry one way or the other about tile but the, the plaster side concerned us some I'd like to see tile put back in. <laughs> you know, honestly. Out of everything that's <laughs> as an accent. Okay. Out of everything that's on here, you're not gonna say one word about EFAS. I was waiting for you to because I've got ten or twelve comebacks on the EFAS there. <coughs> During the meeting or after the meeting? I'll wait till after. Okay. <laughs> um I don't I mean it doesn't matter to me in regards one way or the other on the tile. Well, really the thing does. about it is, if somebody comes in with a building and, and they want to use tile, I mean, surely no one would object to that. But if it is expli uh, specifically excluded, they could not. Kevin, do you have an issue if we leave tile as accent? I don't have a problem with that at all, no. It doesn't have to go back to planning, does it? Jeffrey? L? No. I say we put it right back in there. <laughs> Well, I'm going to make a motion to approve these amendments <laughs> just with the, the tile, exclusion the of tile. Not the plan. Is that an official motion? Uh, with the tile works. being yeah. as accent. As an, as as an, as an accent. As, as a accent. secondary as exterior accent. material. Okay, as a second. How do you want it worded, Kevin? It's, well, we, we call them secondary materials, the stucco, EFIS. We just add tile to that list. Yeah. Okay. okay. Hey, she, when he said EFIS, did you twitch at all? In a good way, not a bad way. No, I, I, I finally figured out that 
y'all have caught up with the twitching and, and, and the planning commission decided to twitch too. HG's very peaceful with evil. <laughs> I'll second his uh, eventual motion. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Item 5 is consideration of an ordinance relative to the amendment to the text of the Smyrna Municipal Zoning Ordinance to amend Article 2, Section 2.020, Definitions, and Article 3, Section 3.180, Fences, and this is a first reading. Kevin? Yeah, Mayor and Council, this was something that staff initiated. There's been a lot of discussion over the years about fences and different things. Um, but this is one that uh, really the Coast Department kind of kept Kept bringing it to my attention and, and asked me to, to try to draft something up um, and so uh, this is really just an attempt to uh, clarify the ordinance for ease of understanding and enforcement as well as to better define it and uh, as to the original intent when the amendment was originally this was something that was actually added to the zoning ordinance back in 2002 so um, currently fences are allowed on side and rear property lines but are not allowed to encroach on the front set yard setback public utility and drainage easements or public right-of-ways. Um, decorative fences are allowed to encroach on the front setback but can't enclose any areas. And so basically the amendments will change that definition of what a decorative fence is and, and also allow them to encroach on the front yard setback along the side property line, um, not in, across the front yard or enclose the front yard. Um, uh, we also added exemptions uh, other than the public right-of-way encroachment for any fences that you are utilized on land that is in agricultural use uh, That's kind of how we've always enforced it, but I wanted to go ahead and put that in the ordinance so it's clear uh, The Planning Commission did review this did recommend approval uh, staff would also recommend approval Questions for Kevin on this Do we have a motion? I'll move we approve we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. We'll now move on to item B, our package liquor board report. Our first item is consideration of an application for a certificate of compliance for a package liquor store from Mr. Patel at Smyrna's Divine Wine and Spirits located at 292 Sam Ridley Parkway East. Jeff? Yes, Mayor. Council, I will first state that, that uh, Package Liquor Board did uh, give a positive recommendation to uh, the applicants, Mr. Patel, at this location. Uh, I do want to advise you, however, uh, received communication from the current store owner uh, that advised me that uh, there has been uh, some, I guess, renegotiations or, or lack of negotiations that do not believe that it's going through at this time. Uh, as far as the sale of, of the store. Obviously, uh, all of these uh, package liquor uh, approvals are only for that location, so it doesn't mean that you can just go anywhere in the town. It's only specific to that location. Um, so we have 60 days uh, to act once it's been filed, which was on May 17th, which would give us to July if you wanted to defer for a month to see if the parties perhaps reach uh, a different agreement uh, or uh, you can go ahead and vote on it tonight but they they would still not be able to uh, have a have a uh, permit or license uh, until it's surrendered from the current store because number one we're limited to five number two uh, they can only move into this building at this location um, but I just think it would be cleaner probably if, uh, if we kind of knew if there was a uh, for sure deal or not going through instead of having one uh, just basically sitting out there for a 12-month period. Can you have two operating on the same place though? No, because the way it was approved was through this store and that <laughs> amount of, it was approved as is. So uh, they couldn't remove one square foot because of the way that, that it was approved has to be at that location. You couldn't have two stores in one place. And you, you know, can't have here, Jeff, it also has a co-applicant, but I mean, it doesn't indicate whether the co-applicant was, um, uh, whether background information was checked on them or not. 
it says it wasn't because they didn't get anything on that second. It says others. It said, yeah, it says others is not provided. Is that, I mean, is it was that a, an issue? No, no, it was not. And it was due to the number of percentages of, of owners. And so Mr. Patel was the one that was provided and they still have to provide their, all their information to the ABC. We're just the, the second step and they still would have to go and receive their license from the uh, Alcohol Beverage Commission. And when I spoke with them, they were uh, okay with the application as is. So are you more comfortable with us deferring this? I would recommend deferral. Um, for would you recommend days. 30 days? Right, till the next council meeting. Okay. Questions for Jeff on this? And this is only good for 60? Is how long this? Correct. We have, well, we have 60 days to, to vote on it from when they've submitted it, which was May 17th. So it would give us to July 17th. Um, so we would need to act on it next month one way or another. Are they aware of that in their negotiations? Uh, they will be after tonight. Okay. Uh, but, okay. Uh, Questions for Jeff? So just to be clear, there's potentially a hiccup or a dispute or something with the contract to purchase. Correct. And the original owner saying is contacted you or someone at the town of Smyrna and disclose that that there's an issue with the sale correct and with that it may or may it may not make as much sense to approve that until we have total clarity otherwise this thing could go on for a while and could prevent something I, I guess a, another sale of the same property occurring or or would hold a license that otherwise would be utilized Right. I, I don't know that there's much of a danger. I, I just, uh, because they can only be at this location. Right. So, but at the same time, uh, if we have the opportunity for, for 30 days, my preference, obviously the, the council can do whatever it wishes. Uh, my preference is not to have an approved one out there that's, n that's not utilized when we know that, that the store is not selling. Uh, if we can get some clarity. We may not have any clarity by that time uh, next month, but uh, w when I spoke with the owner, that's just what they had asked is just uh, you know, see if there's 30 more days. And I would hate for the applicant to have to come back through the process totally again. <coughs> and so uh, I think it would be uh, more prudent to... So to more in hopes there. there's a resolution. Correct. So that we, okay. Correct. I don't think it's totally gone. I think it's just maybe in a having some complications at the moment. Do I have a motion? I make a motion to defer based on council's recommendation. We have a motion to defer. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor of deferring say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is deferred. Item C under new business is consideration of a resolution authorizing the town to file an application for a TDEC grant relative to a park property at Cedar Stone Park. Mike, how are you? I'm great. Great. Thank you, Mayor well, Council. Um, as you well know, the town has applied for a grant for uh, tennis courts and pickleball courts at Cedar Stone Park. Part of the grant process is to have a, uh, a resolution passed by the town council uh, and send in with the grant application. As you well know, uh, this is a 50-50 grant. Uh, our, our part of the match is park impact fees for $500,000 um, and the, the state money would be $500,000 if approved. We have uh, three years from the contract date to get the, the project complete if, uh, if we we're able to get the grant. Questions for Mike on this? Seeing none, do I have a motion to approve? We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Item D is consideration and approval of classification compensation plan for the town positions for the fiscal year 2021-2022. Hey, Jeff. 
Mayor, Council, uh, in conjunction with the adoption of the budget for next fiscal year, we are uh, asking for you to approve the classification and compensation plan uh, for town positions for the fiscal year 2021-22. Any questions for Jeff on this? Seeing none, do I have a motion to approve? Move to approve. A motion, do we have a second? Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Item E is consideration and approval of an amendment to the town's retirement savings plan document to permit a Roth option under the 547B as well as changing the in-service distribution age to 59.5. Jeff? Sure. Uh, as we mentioned at the workshop, the town would like to amend the current retirement savings plan to uh, provide a Roth option under the 457B plan, uh, as well as change that distribution age from 65 to 59.5. Uh, that will give our employees uh, more options in retirement, uh, gives them an opportunity to, to choose either a Roth, which is uh, uh, post-tax, uh, where they pay taxes right now, versus the pre-tax version that we have currently. It also allows them to get to their funds a little bit earlier when they're close to retirement age. Questions for Jeff on this? Jeff, I appreciate y'all looking yep. into more options for our employees. So, do I have a motion? I move we approve. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Our last item is appointment of one member and one council member to the board of directors of the Limeball Public Library to serve three-year terms. And um, Steve Sullivan was our town council appointment and I will say has done an excellent job. Um, I know you've put a lot of hours into it. And Lynn Alexander was um, on the board as well. We had originally gotten um, an application from Lynn but got an email and I think we all got that that she was pulling that application so we currently do not have an application for a member to the board of directors so I would like to put that on the agenda for next month but um, I'm in hopes that Steve would be willing to serve as the appointment from the council again great sure so, um, would someone be willing to put that in the form of a motion? I'll make the motion is to be awarded to that again. He does such so a great job. So you don't have job. to? He does an amazing <laughs> job. I would agree with that. Flatter, you'll get your anymore. <laughs> See what it just got you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have a motion. Do we have a second? A second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Congratulations, Steve. And if there's someone out there that is interested in serving on the uh, board of directors for Limeball Public Library, which meets in Murfreesboro once a month, second Monday, um, if you would submit your application, then we will take a look at that next month. Okay, we will move on to anything under other tonight? Nope. Okay, then we will move on to announcements. Anything, Miss Diane? Todd? I have a few, Mayor. Um, we received an email from a Jody Warwick who experienced a gas leak after hours, and Derek Francis with the gas department as well, the fire department responded. And I think it's impressive the line that she wrote in her email is, even though it was after hours, he responded immediately and with an extremely gracious attitude, which that's that can-do attitude for the town employees. She was very complimentary uh, to us, and at the end, kudos to our Smyrna team, which that just further emphasizes the hard work that these people are doing in those situations I would also say I have um, gotten multiple um, letters or emails like that about Derek he does a great job as well as the rest of our town employees Excellent. so it's always nice to hear um, my neighbor next door is a, an elderly lady lives by herself and there was a gas leak from her central heat and air unit which was having problems and it was after hours on a, a Thursday night and about 8 30 or 9 o'clock and uh, I was very impressed with the quickness and the effectiveness they ended up checking uh, gas levels inside her home around her home inside my home around other neighbors homes they went above and beyond not just checking this one meter 
She was impressed that he came back and double checked. So that was that was impressive that he double checked everybody else. Okay. Uh, I have a uh, late this afternoon. We received information that uh, Mark Hardy, who works in our codes department, uh, lost his granddaughter. Um, we want to extend our our thoughts and prayers um, for Mark and his family in this untimely passing of his granddaughter. I have no idea. He was on the parks board with us. So. Yes, ma'am. Gosh. And the town council and the employees received a, a very touching card from the Atkins family to express their deep appreciation for their uh, kind and thoughtful expressions uh, of, and sympathy. And again, Mark, we want to extend our uh, condolences for you and your family and keep you in our thoughts and our prayers. Um, anything else? Nope. Yes. The town hosted our annual Memorial Day ceremony at the Captain Coos Memorial. Uh, thank you to the Lieutenant, uh, or Lieutenant General Keith Huber for offering remarks. The VFW post number 8422 Carpe Artista and the Smyrna Fire Department Honor Guard for sharing their time to make the ceremony, uh, the ceremony exceptional. It was a nice ceremony. It was, very, it was probably very, the, one of the best we've ever had. Very well attended and very pointed with uh, Lieutenant General Hoover. I agree. Um, we're looking forward to the return of many of our special events this summer. Uh, one that uh, we're excited about is the annual boat day, which will be held sa Saturday, June 19th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Jefferson Springs Rec Park. And Brian will be doing the <laughs> first canoe that goes out. The first splash. The first splash. So he's not <laughs> here. Would that fall on Todd? I mean, no, I'm just the stunt double. I don't, oh, I don't it's a long water. You're what doing you a great job, by the way, tonight. <laughs> yes. The stunt double. Well, I guess they could go in. All three could get he and Rex and Todd could all get in the canoe together. I think y'all do a great job. Splash will be my nickname. That's right. And then finally, our Independence Day celebration will be held Friday, July 2nd. Activities begin at uh, begin in Lee Victory Recreational Park at 5 p.m. Fireworks store display, we used to call it Dark 30. So at 9.30, we will, usually dark plus 30, we'll have the fireworks. And Chief Culbertson does a wonderful job um, getting those fireworks. Agreed. Yeah. And I think everyone's looking forward to it. Very much so. Yeah, it seems like it hasn't happened in two years. Uh, agreed. Anything else? On a personal note, just want to wish my wife a happy anniversary on Thursday. So. Uh, Very good. Any big plans? No. <laughs> That's not the right answer. <laughs> yes, we're doing a lot of cool stuff there. <laughs> Maybe there's a surprise. Any there. Might be really nice gifts? Uh, no. After 32 years. Not it's the right answer again. 32 years. It's a surprise. <laughs> I can't, I can't disclose it may just surprise. be 32 <laughs> if that's yeah. what your answer is. But that was his limit. That was all my limit, that's yeah. <laughs> that's uh, all I have. That's it, thanks. Jeff? Nothing for me. Raquel? Um, condolences to the Hardy family and Mark, our condolences to you also. Um, we're con continuing to keep you in our prayers. Thank you. Um, also wanted to say congratulations to Andrea Cork and Breaking Bread for celebrating 20 years in business. And um, also wanted to mention that this past weekend there were quite a few events and one of those was the Depot District Arts and Story Fest. And so on Friday night there was an author's night and poetry slam that was held at Carpe um, Cafe. And then on Saturday we had the um, art crawl and there were three winners, and Mayor, I think at some point they will uh, come to right. council meeting and, and receive certificates for the uh, citizens' chosen winners for, we had this year an adult category, a youth category, and we also had a veterans category this year. Um, and I'd also like to thank, Ms., uh, to thank Melissa Scott and Ron Alley for overseeing all of those events this weekend. And um, I know you're going to talk about uh, the Ten Great Tennessee Air Show, but um, we were able to attend that, and uh, I think that went really well. And um, um, a lot of people came out and supported that, and I was glad to be able to take my son. He really did enjoy it. Um, and lastly, Memorial Day ceremony. I believe it also went beautifully and was glad to be able to be in attendance. I agree on what you said, Mayor. It, it was one of the best we've had. I agree. Thank you, ma'am. HG? 
Um, also passing along my condolences to Mark. I, I can empathize with him. It's really tough to lose uh, our parents. And uh, also Mark Hardy, who's a very capable park board member. He's been uh, terrific to serve with on the park board. So sorry for that. Um, over the last few weeks, watching America open back up has really been uh, fulfilling. Uh, you know, with the Memorial Day service this last weekend, with uh, all the things that went on, the art crawl, but the the um, air show was was absolutely terrific, and you know that really instills a, a lot of pride in America with us all. And, this weekend, we have more to talk about, the Sim Simply Smyrna celebration, and there's so much going on, I make, actually made little notes on this one so that I could get it and cover it all. But it'll start at 6 o'clock on Saturday night, and of course, at the, uh, the depot. They're going to, this is kind of a sister event to the depot days, which is held by, in the fall and held by SIMA. But this one um, it is more emphasis on music, and there'll be five venues. Um, scattered across the, the depot area. Um, the um, MC for it all is Devin O'Day, who some may be familiar with. She's with uh, Main Street Media. And uh, uh, some of the names which people may notice would be Jason McKinney on the main stage, um, Ella Caustic Soul at, cafe, at the cafe stage, and inside uh, the depot, uh, J.T. Cooper, who is uh, known around town as a um, patriotic. very patriotic veteran, uh, and he will have um, um, Warrior Rounds, which is uh, uh, songwriters, um, veteran songwriters who will be uh, performing their own music. Um, there will be over 70 vendors, um, two uh, things of note, if you uh, care to have a beer, the beer garden will be there, uh, along, um, sponsored by the Casual Pint and Sima. There are two different wine tastings, uh, so you could take your wife down to the wine tastings for your anniversary. Uh, those are also um, hosted by um, Divine Wine, and um, one other large thing of note with that is that uh, we will also be celebrating um, Cafe, uh, Carpe Artista's 10 year anniversary. So, a big event. First one, in, Mary Esther? Yes. <laughs> Carpe Artista, 10 year anniversary. Everybody's anniversary in this year, aren't How they? How about that? They sure are. I bet they get gifts. Another thing that uh, I would like to relay Yesterday was um, my lovely daughter's birthday, so I want to wish her a happy birthday. And then next Monday will be my son's birthday. So happy birthday to my two wonderful children. I'm very proud of them. Do you think they got gifts? Did they get gifts? Yeah. Uh, we generally hold off and do all that on uh, oh, um, Father's Day. We'll do that. Gotcha. But they'll get gifts for that. I mean, that would be they would get gifts for that occasion, probably. Oh uh, yeah, they'll get yeah. gifts. Do you have mm. something in mind that they need? No, but I was just thinking about anniversaries. Most people get gifts for anniversaries. Yeah. It's true. And that's all Especially I have. After thirty-two. Years. After thirty-two years. Yeah. Tim, do you give your wife gifts for your anniversary? <laughs> yes, I do. That's what I thought. It's the twenty-second. It's marked gift is bought and um, I'm prepared there you go maybe you need to have a little chat with Todd I will okay uh, it's always hard to follow HG it was just riveting the way you described things and I, I do appreciate that I'm excited about Simply Smyrna truly I've been practicing by the way oh, thanks uh, it's it's a great showcase for Smyrna I mean Dan talked about Smyrna and the, how we care and and what we do for others here it's just a great showcase and it's a community and reminds everybody that it's Tennessee's town, Smyrna. So, uh, again, condolences, Mark, Dan, Tony, your entire family, uh, and also condolences to the Hardy family. I know you'll touch more on the great Tennessee air show, but once again, HG said it well. It was You just felt so patriotic and you truly took pride in America and, and how things were showcased and 
it was just a, a great air show weekend. So hats off to the Great Tennessee Air Show and the Airport Authority for pulling that off. Great. That's it. Jerry? Um, some of the same things that everyone else has already talked about, uh, but uh, obviously, uh, Mark, again, uh, condolences. As I know we, we talked some, but uh, continue to remember you and um, the Hardy family as well. Uh, the Memorial Day celebration was, was fantastic. Uh, really enjoyed being a part of that and being able to go to the air show as well. Um, the one thing that uh, I don't think we're going to be getting together and t uh, before this, so I just want to, it's kind of early, but I just want to wish uh, the, uh, the fathers out there a happy Father's Day. And uh, um, some of us are not fortunate to have ours around, so uh, um, just uh, be thankful uh, if you do. Uh, tell him you love him, and um, just um, uh, hope you um, have you have hope you have a great day on that day. So maybe that's all I got. Great, Steve. Um, a couple of things, obviously, Mark. Um, sorry for the loss of your father. Um, Father's Day coming up. I was going to mention Father's Day. You know, I'm fortunate enough that uh, my my dad is uh, relatively young uh, for my age. He was only 15 when I was born. So. Um, I get to, I've gotten to spend a lot of years uh, with my dad and enjoyed um, doing things with him that some folks don't allow and I, I don't take that for granted so um, I'm sorry for your loss Mark and um, uh, happy Father's Day in advance uh, especially to my father but to every father out there. Um, Mark uh, Hardy, um, sorry for the loss of your granddaughter I, I can't imagine uh, the pain and I, I, um, I'm sorry for that loss. Um, Memorial Day, sorry to, that I was not here. Um, I spent the week with my son in California uh, for his uh, 96. He gets a four-day weekend for Memorial Day, so we went for the week and uh, spent a great week with him. It's the first time we've seen him since Christmas, so it was a good time. Um, and speaking of him, he has his birthday coming up June 17th. We won't meet before then, so his uh, 20, what year is this, 20, 22nd birthday. Um, will be June 17th and then uh, my segue there is uh, Mark and I have another uh, birthday that we have to mention yes. and uh, I was would, not, my list. would not possibly yes. want to miss right. uh, my wife Pam and Mark's wife Connie uh, happen to share the same birthday uh, they both uh, celebrate their birthday on June 4th and uh, I'm not sure about Connie but I know that Pam told me she was 29 um, and told you Connie was 29? Told me that Pam was. I okay. have no I, about, idea about Connie. <laughs> so I think Connie might have lied to Pam. Okay, I, I it's possible. Know. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, you know, she, I, I was very, uh, it was very, um, I was instructed very pointedly. You know why? Because you knew if I said something, you'd be in hot water. Uh, that's why I'm glad I go before you. Because <laughs> uh, now, now I didn't forget. So. <laughs> and you won't let me. That's right. <laughs> that's all. Yeah. Thanks, thanks. So happy birthday to my, my wife, Connie, uh, this past week. And uh, we'll just leave the whole age thing alone. She knows how old she is. Uh, I was 15 when I married her, actually, so I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, you know, uh, <laughs> that's a joke. Okay, so, um, you know, the memorial, the memorial service that we had uh, over at the uh, Coos Memorial site was touching. I thought Lieutenant General Huber's speech was spot on. And uh, he talked about service and sacrifice, and um, you know, there's a, a great gift given to us by those that have done so. And so, uh, hats off to them, salute them. Uh, I was really touched by his speech. Um, you know, I just lost my father, and my father was an Air Force servant. My mother was too. So, uh, you know, I, th I thought about Dad's funeral too, being military honors in the time that he gave as a representative of the United States Air Force. I want to say thank you to everybody that called or texted or sent me a message or came by the funeral home to visit or just whatever it was that you guys reached out and, and told me about your uh, condolences. I really do appreciate that. Uh, Dad would have been super proud of the air show this weekend too, watching those young people go out onto the tarmac and take the oath of service. And um, you know, that, that tells me the country's still in really good hands because you've got young people that want to go do that. Uh, and serve their country the way they do. Um, the air show brought a lot of pride to me personally because my, my parents and my background with the Air Force, but uh, uh, you know, when I think about uh, those pilots 
and uh, you know the Blue Angels that uh, were here a few years ago lost a pilot. That's a dangerous job. Uh, I was quite impressed with all of them as we met them. Um, Major um, Coran, Michelle Coran, uh, is the solo lead solo flight for uh, the Blue. Ang uh, I'm sorry for the Thunderbirds, and she's like 34. She's the fifth pilot ever to be a female to fly with the Thunderbirds. So I know that you had an opportunity to get all the girls together and have their pictures made, and that may may or may not be up there, but um, just awesome to see young people like that step up and be part of the military and serve our country the way they do. Uh, so to me, watching those young people be sworn in, you've got a son serving currently, and uh, it just empowers me to feel a lot of pride about our country and where it's going. So that's all I have. Great. Thanks, Mark. So um, you've heard a lot talk about the uh, Great Tennessee Air Show that took place. It was the 50th, 50th anniversary um, this weekend. Hard to believe it's been going on for 50 years, but it's such a huge part of the fabric of our community. And um, I think the patriotism in which that we feel. And so congratulations to John Black and the Smyrna Rutherford County Airport Authority for hosting such an exceptional event. Um, what a lot of people may not realize is they kind of take care of the stuff that are that's inside the gates, but there's lots of stuff outside of the gates that has to be taken care of. Um, you know, traffic just doesn't magically take care of itself. So our staff is uh, the week leading up to the air show and really long before that in regards to safety and um, in case there was something that happened, um, working behind the scenes, we can't th thank our staff and enough. I also want to thank all the residents and the guests that were here. I can't tell you when one thing that I've catch myself doing in the town, whether it's um, I go to a restaurant or Walmart or an event, I'll check out the license tags. I can't tell you the number of license tags from California and Michigan and states all over the country that were here for the air show. So thank you to all of those individuals for your participation as well. Um, I want to thank the Smyrna Police Department, Fire Department, Public Works, and Parks and Recreation for your role in making the weekend such a huge success. Um, it takes quite a few people to put the air show on and um, make it such a successful event. We were lucky enough, the pictures that you see on the screen we were lucky enough to get to go out to greet um, the Thunderbirds coming in on um, Friday. And um, Chief Bill got some spectacular pictures as well as Kathy Farrell. And um, you're right, Michelle does an amazing job. And if you got to see her up close or got to see her plane up close, you'll notice that her number five is upside down on her uniform as well as her plane because she spends most of her time upside down in the air. So it was amazing to get to um, talk with her for a little while. Um, uh, also condolences to Mark Hardy. Mark, you and I have talked quite a bit about your dad and um, how sorry we are about that. Um, Jeff, uh, I know a lot of people sometimes wonder, they'll hear my phone and hear the talking of the meeting going on, but I do that because I like to make sure I keep up with the comments that are on Facebook. Some I disregard, some I actually um, like to ask questions. So one person was asking about um, solicitors in the town, and I've actually seen quite a bit of this on Facebook, where they've got solicitors come into their house, and what are the requirements, and I don't know, I don't know if Chief Arnold or Miss Diane or Jeff, one of you all might be able to take this to talk a little bit about the rules and requirements, and if somebody doesn't have the uh, permit, what do they need to do? So who wants to take this one? I, I can start off. Diane probably even knows more than I do about it, but... Uh, uh, they do need, if they're going to be going from house to house, uh, they do need to have a solicitor's permit. Uh, within that permit, some of the things that are going to be required are uh, the make, model, and license plate of the vehicles that are going to be used in that, uh, the duration of time that they're going to be. They're also going to have to pay for that permit as well. Um, and then uh, uh, at any time, if someone feels like someone's being too pushy, that's usually where the issue comes, right? Uh, they can always contact the police if they, if they feel unsafe uh, in that matter. Uh, 
keep in mind that we cannot tell folks hey, not to go to these houses, but you can put up a, a no solicitor's sign. Um, if you don't want folks there, at least to let them know, you know, some folks may not pay attention to that, but, but still, uh, it's always a good idea if you, if you don't want them to be there to, to put up a sign for that. Um, so once they come and actually get the permit from us, what is it that they would have that I would know if they come to my door, they've been to the town? Is it a piece of paper? Is it something they were on the neck? It's a piece of paper and it says solicitor's permit. It's been signed by Chief Arnold and it's been signed by me. Okay. So. And usually if I'm, a, if I'm going to be soliciting in the town of Smyrna or want to and I want to come get a permit, how long does that process usually take? Uh, well, I, as soon as I get the application, I send it to the police department, and they do a records check on that individual. So it may take a, couple a few days. days for that okay. to come back. And I guess what I wanted the citizens to know is if they go through proper channels, we do check out the solicitors and um, the cars. We know what car they're going to be driving, those sort of things. So and there have been times the chief did not sign off on one. For various reasons and when that happens don't go any further and if somebody comes to um, someone's house and they ask for the permit and they don't have it is the best thing to do to call the police department and let them know yes, yes. okay so um, I hope that that answered Miss Demumbrium's question and um, she said she does have a no soliciting sign up but um, I don't know that there's much that we can do about that so yeah, it's, it's interesting that you brought that up we my neighborhood, uh, which is actually right behind the police department, um, we had recently had a, a rash of solicitors, and as a neighborhood, we decided to put up a neighborhood sign at our entrance that says no soliciting, and, and we've also done on our internal Facebook page the same thing you're doing, kind of communication to the citizens of what, what they're allowed to do, what they're not allowed to do. You know, the sign doesn't mean they can't do it. It just is letting them know that you would prefer they don't. Uh, so it's kind of important that you understand that, that even though you have no soliciting up there, it's not like a no trespassing sign. It's a little different. And um, that was something that was a little hard for us to kind of understand in our neighborhood because we had the sign and there were still licensed solicitors coming to our doors, right? So um, it lets them know that they're not really wanted, but that doesn't actually mean they can't do it. Well, I know when they've come to my door, I politely ask them, have they gotten their permit? And um, I let them know that they have to have a permit and how they go about doing that. So um, do you, just do you tell them you're the mayor. I do not tell them I'm the mayor. I say I I'm the vice you, mayor is what I, I think, say. I think <laughs> if you told them you were the mayor and then asked for their permit, they're probably going to go away if they don't have a permit. <laughs> so um, and, and and many of those that are out doing that are hard-working folks that want to do the right thing that may just not know that we require permits so I usually let Jacks go to the front window oh that's a good I, idea that's a good idea because I tell everybody I'm the mayor when they you come do? to my door oh <laughs> well I do have to tell you that I did hear one funny story from uh, that I saw posted on Facebook that it was somebody who was volunteering for um, the air show this weekend and said that there was a nice couple that parked in an area that was very much marked off that you could not park in that area and so the volunteer went up to him and said you know you're going to have to move and they said I'm the mayor's brother and she politely said well I went to school with the mayor and I know she doesn't have a brother and he said oh but I'm her half brother and she said well it's really funny because I actually was um, a student of her mother and I know that she nor her father um, have a son and he said Oh, then I guess it's probably time for me to move on. And uh, she said, "Yes, probably so." So, anyone out there that's using the story that you're the mayor's brother, it's not going to fly. So, um, anything else to come before the board? Yes, Mary Esther. Yes, sir. Be kind yeah. to chop local. I was going to see if you remembered. I was worried about you. Thank it was you. slipping. Yep, slipping. Okay. Anything else? Nothing else. We are adjourned.